Oh, hi there, everybody, and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. I'm glad you joined me today because there's a certain tree that I've been after ever since I got into bonsai. I've tried growing it from seed, I've tried growing it from cuttings, and it never works. And finally, I found a garden center that has one, so I bought one. So let's work on that today. So this, believe it or not, is a paper bark maple, otherwise known as an Acer grissium. And you know, these can these are a real pain in the butt to grow from seeds. They're pretty much impossible to grow from cuttings. So I was really pleased to be able to get my hands on one of these. And uh, I thought what we'd do, we'll work on this and see what we can do with it. You might also realize that I'm now wearing a wireless mic. And the reason for that was, I found that the microphone on my camera was picking up a lot of background noise, you know, but birds and, the wind and, and things like that are not all bit that's not necessarily bad i mean you know i do live somewhat in the country so some there's you know some degree of background noise is always nice but it's just too much and i, I thought that it was in film with the with the sound quality of my video so hopefully this wireless mic should fix some of that so if we take a closer look at this tree we can just see or if we just take this tag off and it's just looped on here with a a light slip knot, there we go. So this is an Acer Grissium. And one of the reasons why I wanted this tree is because this has the, the bark that peels off and it's a year round thing. So, you know, any time of year that you look at this tree, it'll be peeling this bark off. And you can see with this tree, I mean, this must be, I don't know, uh, three years old, possibly. It doesn't sound the label. No, it doesn't sound the label. I've, I've, so, I mean, just, guessing it must be about three years old but you can see it's already peeling it already has that effect where the bark is beginning to peel you can see there's a section here if you get my chopstick you can see there's a section here that's beginning to peel that's a really fascinating feature of this tree so if we just uh if we just look at the the trunk here it's not too bad it does have some degree of movement uh, so we have the bulbous base just in here, you can see the trunk must be must be just over a centimetre wide. It uh, must be about half an inch, maybe just under half an inch. So if we go further down, it, it gets wider and then I was digging around down here earlier and it seems as though it gets narrower as it goes deeper into the soil. So if we look further up this tree, we can see it divides into two here. So we have this branch coming on upwards and then we have two branches coming out. Wait, uh, there's actually a trident here, so you can see there's a branch coming out to the right, branch coming out to the, or out to the left, out to the right, and then there's a central branch going way up into the, you know, way up into the sky. And then as we go further up, we can see this section here, the trunk carries on up. And if I spin this round, we have the thicker portion to the left, that's, that's carrying on up and then divides into two and goes up into the sky. And then we have the this thinner branch coming up and then there's a bit of a bit of a strange curve here where it's clearly been cut off here in the past and this branch has come off to the right and then it's looped around, divided into two and then the branches have, have gone skyward. But seeing as though this is a, a paper bark maple and they're incredibly difficult to propagate, I thought this might be a good candidate to try out air layering. So before we do any air layering, the first thing we need is some sphagnum moss. And luckily, down here in this box, I have just that. Now this is dried, so I will need to soak this in water for a little while. Um, but this is just the basic sphagnum moss that you can buy online, it usually comes in little sacks. And uh, what I do is I soak this and we try out some air layering. Right, so I was thinking if we start with this one here, so if we start with this one coming up, 
we have a nice branch coming to the left and a nice branch coming to the right. So I, I don't really want to get rid of these two. So I'm thinking I don't want all of this up here. So ideally, this is a nice straight section here, perfect for an airlining. <laughs> Right, so the next stage is putting the sphagnum moss on. Now, I was looking at different techniques on how to do this, and one technique that I really liked was putting the sphagnum moss into a little bag, slicing a, or making a slice down the middle, and then wrapping the bag around the stem. So would you believe my wireless mic went and failed on me and I thought it was a good buy. I thought it would help my videos out and it'll clear up some of that background noise. But you know, to be honest, it's been more trouble than what it's worth. Uh, so I think I'm going to go back to my original plan and just use the inbuilt microphone on my camera and I'll just go back to recording videos the way that I, I have been in the past. But anyway, going back to the video, all I've done is I've just put some moss in these small little bags and uh, in the next step, you'll see that I'm just going to use a knife just to slit down the middle and with, with the aim of wrapping these around around the stems. So you want to make these bags so they're, they're, they're full enough, but they're not too full that they're, you know, you, you want enough give that they do go around. So here you can see I just have some root, uh, rooting powder. It's, it's nothing special. It's just a basic rooting powder that you can you buy in you know, you can pick up in garden centers and or supermarkets or places like that. It's, it's nothing special, but it's just to help the, you know, help the whole rooting process and, you know, give the, the, the stems or give the air layering a bit more chance to, to push out some roots. So you just put on a brush. I'm, I'm just using a, an old toothbrush to do this. And you just get plenty on your brush and just put it on the top, upper top part of the cut points that you've made on the branches. You can care less about the lower section because you're going to cut that off at a later date anyway, so that doesn't matter. So yeah, you just go, th I mean, I have three air layering points on this tree, so you just do the same to each one and you go around and you would just put a bit of root and powder on the top edge of each one. And so, yeah, you can just just make sure that it's up at that, you know, really up in the, in that top part of the, of the part that you've cleared away or cut away and exposed. Right, so here you can see that these are little bags that, yeah, and, and the aim is uh, to, to wrap them around. So you want there to be just enough moss in the bag to 
obviously, you know, help with the whole LM and process or root and process, but you don't want too much that it's too difficult to, to wrap around the branch. And then you just use a knife just to piss, piss it first, and then just slice a, make a nice slice down the middle. You know, I actually saw this technique in a YouTube video, and th- there were several ideas on how to do LM and, and what to use. Uh, some people like to use yogurt pots, some people like to use, you know, make their own little bags out of, out of bits of plastic. There is this idea going around that uh, black plastic works best. And personally, I don't really subscribe to the idea because I think that black plastic is just going to absorb more heat and that's really going to cook your roots inside the, inside the bag. So, you know, I opted to use clear plastic in this, in this experiment. And I think the other big bonus with this is that you'll be able to see the roots slowly growing. And of course, you know, as the roots begin to fill the bag, you know, you'll, you'll know when to, to make the big cut and cut the, the branch and then pot it on into its new home. So, yeah, you can see here, all I've done is I've wrapped the, the bag around the branch and then you just use a little bit of wire just to fasten that onto the branch. So because these, these bags aren't that big and because these branches that I'm trying to air layer aren't too large, of course, if you're going to do this on a bigger tree, you'd have to, you know, make a different arrangement and use you know, a lot, you know, a much bigger bag but in this instance because these branches are only small I can use a smaller bag and uh, yeah you can see it's still a little bit open at the bottom so what I'm gonna have to do is get another bit of wire here and just wrap this around just to fasten that bottom edge nice and tight you don't want it too tight that it digs into the branch but you want it tight enough that it stays on and it holds in place the last thing that you want is a, a bag flapping around on a branch because it's it's not going to help, you know, with the root development at all, and it's just going to, you know, it's just going to eventually, you know, fall off, and and this is really going to defeat the point of what you're trying to achieve. So yeah, you can see as I squeeze that, a good bit of water came out. That's good. I mean, I I did soak this moss to, before I did this, and of course you do want this nice and nice and damp. So if any water does squirt out, that's just the excess that's squirting out the bottom. And the important thing with this, and the good thing about using sphagnum moss for this, is sphagnum moss does retain moisture, it does hold on to moisture. And of course, the, the big thing, the big, you know, the main point of doing this is you, you want the medium that you're using to remain moist and remain nice and wet. And uh, sphagnum moss retains moisture really well. And the other th- big benefit about using plastic bags is you will have condensation happening inside the bag and that will of course help keep that moss nice and damp and nice and wet yeah see uh, this branch here was a bit of a challenge you can see water squirting out the bottom um yes it's quite a challenge because this is that curved branch and this is a real real issue to a real problem to to get this bag to fit on that curved point point and get these wires in to hold it in place but you can see i'm i'm struggling to get that wire in at the top and you just give it a good twist and make sure it's nice and Nice and bound to the branch. That's good. And and then I just put one on the lower edge. And then, yeah, it's important just to give the tree and those the, the bags a nice water, keep them nice and moist. Of course, you want to keep the tree in good health because you have severed, or partially severed some branches. So, you, you know, you want to keep the health of the tree nice and keep the roots in good order. So I did do my usual sign off for this video, but of course, without any sound, you can't hear what I'm saying. So... I think I just said something along the lines of, you know, acegrisiums are very difficult to propagate. You know, it's very difficult to grow these on from seed. I think LRN, if this is successful, uh, I'm going to get four trees for the price of one, you know, and, and you can't beat that for, for a good deal. Well, anyway, guys, uh, as always, take it easy. Have a good day. And until next time, I'll catch you on the next one.